Well, recent statistics indicate many Christians plan to stay home on Election Day. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee believes that's a big mistake. His message, if you want to make a difference, you have to show up at the ballot box. Wendy Griffith re recently caught up with him on the set of his popular talk show in Nashville. And now, here's Mike Huckabee! Mike Huckabee is passionate about many things. Playing his bass with a house band on his weekly show, Huckabee. Interviewing newsmakers and entertainers. And of course, talking politics. It is the official kickoff for the election season. One part of that subject really bothers him. The fact that so many Christians don't vote. You know, Wendy, it's shocking when you think about that 40 million Christians sitting at home on a presidential election means that they would have completely changed the outcome, not just of that election, but of every election in America if they registered and then went to vote. And a lot of them don't want to vote because they say, oh, politics is so dirty. And my response to that is, well, how do you think it's going to get cleaner if all the Christians stay out of it? He says believers should follow the Bible when it comes to voting. And for the governor, the central issues are abortion and Israel. Life and Israel. We don't have a choice. And those are biblical issues. They're not political issues. So it's easy to separate those. Now, if you want to argue about the marginal tax rate, that's fine. I, I can't honestly say that the Bible has a position on what the proper percentage should be or what the capital gains tax should be. I know what I think it should be economically, but I can't argue that biblically. But I can definitely say that when it comes to the protection of human life, that's a biblical issue uh, because the scripture speaks of being made in the womb and knitted by God. And that's pretty clear. And in Genesis 12, it says, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. If you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. Mm -hmm. That's pretty clear. Yeah. And so I don't feel like you got to tell Christians how to vote, but ask them to vote biblically. Huckabee, a former Baptist preacher turned politician, made his own run for the White House in both 2008 and 2016. Governor, you're only 69. You're, only. you're young. Any thoughts of uh, getting back um, in the game as far as running for president? No. I think, uh, you know, you do that twice, and as I tell people, you can only mortgage your home so many times to go out and run for office. And then you have to start realizing maybe this is not going to be my career path. And I'm okay with that. I gave it my best shot twice. Let's talk about your daughter. Not only was she White House press secretary, but she's now following in your footsteps as the first female governor of Arkansas. How proud are you? I'm incredibly proud of her. She has worked really hard in her life. Somebody may say, yeah, well, she was the governor's daughter. She had a clear path. There's no clear path in politics. Sometimes that can work against you. But I've seen her do bold and adventurous things as governor in a short period of time. What's it like having your own show? It's really fun. We've done this. We're almost finished with season seven, which is hard for me to believe. We've been doing it seven years and no end in sight. But we designed it to be a variety show, sort of a throwback to the old days when people could sit down, watch a television show that was wholesome, that was informative, but that was entertaining as well. But it's kind of, for me, full circle. I started in broadcasting at age 14 when I went to work at a radio station. That's how I paid my way through junior high, high school, college, and grad school. My first career was not the pastorate. It was communications. I ran an ad agency, and I worked in radio and television. You're a musician, you're a politician, you're, you have a TV show, and now you're acting. You're going to be in God's Not Dead yeah. number five. Tell me about your role. Yeah, I think this is an Oscar-winning performance, uh, Wendy. I'm, I'm really working on my acceptance speech. I play a small role, but it's fun, and it's, uh, it's a phenomenal film. It's set in the life of a pastor who decides to run for Congress in a special election, and he finds out what a completely corrupt environment the world of uh, politics can be. You pull back the curtain and let us see how the game is really played. So there's a value to that. But there's a powerful message for every Christian believer, and it's a wonderful story. Huckabee says his faith continues to guide him in everything he does. I've had people, Wendy, that would say, I guess it's really hard to be a Christian in politics. And I say, actually, it's much easier. And here's why. I don't have to wake up every day and figure out what I need to believe, because I know what I believe. And it may not be 
popular. It may not win me friends. It may even create some enemies. But I know where I stand. And the reason I do is because I stand on the Word of God. And I stand on the principles that God is real and that His Word, His direction is more important than anything else in my life. And for those worried about the upcoming election, Huckabee says, Well, I would say don't worry. Uh, Philippians says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. So pray about it rather than worry about it. But then put that prayer to action. Make sure you're registered to vote. Go vote. And don't go alone. Take every friend, relative, person you work with, every neighbor that you know who has biblical values and get them to the polls. Explain to them why it's important. Don't be or allow people around you to be part of that 40 million of evangelical Christians in this country who don't even vote. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Nashville. Well, please, this election cycle and every election cycle, make your voice heard. It's one of the great privileges we have as citizens of this great Republican republic. We get to be able to vote. Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, your faith belongs in that voting booth. Your faith belongs in the public square. Uh, let your voice be heard and make sure you participate in our grand elections. You may have to be holding your nose when you vote, but that's okay. At least you're voting and you're letting your vote count.